Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, March 11, 2022. Work is being done to update the tax architecture with clear and coherent laws that will facilitate the ease of doing business, create a more equitable tax system, and provide opportunities within the global tax landscape. That's the focus of the 2022-2023 budget to drive sustainable economic growth and development, as indicated by Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark during the opening debate on Tuesday. Among the legislation to be amended are the Income Tax Act, which will be advanced this year, and the Large-Scale Project and Pioneer Industry Act, which will be tabled in the next fiscal year. As we aim to attract larger billion-dollar, U.S. billion-dollar investments, it is imperative that we do so within prescribed structures, which will ultimately safeguard our economic sustainability. In view of this, the Act is intended to undergo a series of amendments which seek to create a coherent and self-contained legislative framework for granting fiscal incentives in respect of large qualifying projects in a rules-based and transparent manner. Further to that, amendments to the Revenue Administration Act will take effect in May. This will require financial institutions to submit information to Tax Administration Jamaica, while exchanges of information with relevant jurisdictions will begin in September. Reforms will also take place to consolidate four statutory deductions into one, as well as to put all sanctions in the various tax legislation into one uniform sanctions code. The Customs Act will also be repealed and replaced. Government intends to grant two integrated resort development licenses in the upcoming fiscal year, which will represent a combined investment of at least $1 billion U.S. dollars. An integrated resort development must have a minimum of 1,000 hotel rooms, of which 500 must be luxury rooms. The development must also have a minimum capital investment of 500 million U.S. dollars. Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark says that in seeking to attract potential investors, the government issued a request for applications, RFA, for approved integrated resort developments on October 6, 2021. We received nine sets of queries from four potential investors seeking clarification for the process. We have an enterprise team in place which will make a recommendation for approval that will eventually lead to at least a billion U.S. dollars being invested in an integrated resource in Jamaica. Minister Clark gave the update as he opened the 2022-2023 budget debate on Tuesday. Also coming out of this week's sitting of Parliament, the Finance Minister has announced that Jamaica's 15th population and housing census is to get underway on September 12. The census provides an estimate of the Jamaican population at a single point in time, with information about the size of the population in areas such as age, sex, religion and education. He says the main data collection phase is expected to last to December 2022, with a general census report to be available by December 2023. A count will be made and data collected in respect of persons who are usual residents of Jamaica, whether physically present or not, on that date. And data on the Jamaican population is used by government to make policy and by businesses to uh, locate their business establishments. Minister Clark says recruitment and training is underway for 8,000 temporary field workers, including area managers, census supervisors, census takers and data editors. The 15th population and housing census was initially scheduled for 2021, but was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The last census was done in 2011. A project has been launched to reinforce road safety messages among students attending seven primary and infant schools in Jamaica. The Safe Passages, Safe Routes to School Safety Club is a follow-up to the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF's Safe Passage Project. It's being implemented in collaboration with the Education Ministry, the Transport Ministry's Road Safety Unit, the Municipal Corporations, the Community Development Committee, and the JCF's Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch. Education Minister Favel Williams says the goal is to provide a safe environment for students as they traverse roadways and thoroughfares in the vicinity of their school campuses. I'm particularly pleased that children from the Augustown Primary, Beckerstedt Primary and Infant, Greenwich Primary, Hope Valley Experimental Primary, Roehampton Primary, Salt Spring Primary and Infant, and Treadlight Primary and Infant Schools are deeply involved in this initiative. Some of these schools offering service at the early childhood level will benefit directly from membership in this club. 
Transport Minister Audley Shaw says it's necessary as global statistics show that too many children, including child pedestrians in low- and middle-income countries such as Jamaica, are victims of fatal injuries. At the ministry, we place a special emphasis on school children who now more than ever need to get to schools safely across the island. With a total investment of 155 million Jamaican dollars, the Safe Passage project includes the rehabilitation or construction of infrastructure such as sidewalks, bus bays, and guardrails. It also includes the painting of murals and installation of road safety signs, as well as public education and road safety programs engaging staff, students, and residents from the beneficiary communities. Road safety clubs are also being formed. And finally, this Saturday, March 12, is the official funeral for the late former government minister, Dr. Paul Douglas Robertson. Dr. Robertson died on Saturday, February 19, at the age of 75. The funeral will take place at the Mona Chapel of the University of the West Indies at 1 p.m. Dr. Paul Robertson held public office from 1989 to 2007. He was first appointed to the Senate on March 2, 1989, and later served in the House of Representatives as Member of Parliament for Southeast St. Catherine from 1993 to 2007. Dr. Robertson was awarded the Order of Distinction in the rank of Commander for dedicated service as a parliamentarian in 2008. He served as Cabinet Minister between 1989 and 1993, covering the portfolios of foreign affairs and industry, investment and commerce. His funeral will be restricted to the Order of Service participants, and the Office of the Prime Minister says the pertinent approval has been secured from ODPEM. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.